Hi there, good afternoon and you've tuned in to ET Now. This is Market Fakafat with me, Shail D'Souza. Along with me, I have Vinnie Motiwala. Very good afternoon to you, Vinnie. And if you look at the markets, so uh, almost an hour ago is when we actually saw a spike in the market, uh, taking the market to the day's highest point. Uh, but as you can see right now, it is near the levels, but yes, given up some of those gains. But Nifty is, has surpassed the 19,400 mark once again in today's trading session. Let's take a look at what Nifty Bank is doing. Because in the earlier part of the day, it was Nifty Bank that was outperforming the benchmark indices while the benchmarks were in negative. And as you can see now, uh, Nifty Bank is also out, uh, continues to outperform benchmark indices uh, at uh, near the day's highest point as we speak. Broader markets, they are continuing their run. They are actually charting their own course. You had uh, the Nifty uh, mid-cap index hit a fresh record high in today's trading session while you had the small cap index hit a 19-month uh, high in today's trading session. So uh, that's the way how the markets are actually looking at this point in time, Mini. Absolutely, surely on that front. But we do have some updates that has come in also on the weather front as well in terms of, you know, uh, there's an expectation that, you know, we may see further increase in terms of the El Nino conditions going forward in the next year as well. And, uh, you know, what is happening on that front to understand more, we're joined by Mr. Uh, GP Sharma as well. Uh, also, okay, uh, okay, we will uh, connect back with GP Sharma, but uh, let's bring on board our technical analyst for today. We have Kunal Shah from LKP Securities joining in with us, while from the research team, uh, we have uh, Ashesha as well as Ankita joining in with us. A very good afternoon to all three of y'all as well. And, uh, you know, we will get started with all the stocks uh, that are buzzing in trade as well. Let me just confirm if we do have uh, GP Sharma again joining in with us. Uh, okay. Uh, let's just start uh, with the first stock then that is in focus today. We have Crompton Reeves Consumer Electricals that's in focus and this is on the back of an analyst meet that they had. A very strong commentary that they came and gave in on terms of the growth outlook for the company. They said they're embarking on a journey which is called 2.0 journey where they'll uh, be focusing on uh, driving a double digit growth in terms of revenues. Fan segment they'll be focusing in terms of the premium, increasing the premium mix over there as well and that will increase in terms of improvement in terms of the margins of the company as well. They see benefits coming in from the new sales teams for the lighting segment that will start coming in from September onwards so that will give a further push to the lighting segment and other than that obviously they're expanding more into um the ceiling segment, uh, lightings of ceilings as well, ceiling lighting segment as well, which will start driving the growth for the company for uh, from uh, the Q4 of FY24 as well. Kitchen appliances too, they're expecting a strong growth there as well and the company is going to be focusing on a lot more new areas and regions as well. West and East region where they didn't have Crompton as a company didn't have much in terms of uh, the presence there, now they are increasing there as well. New categories is what they're looking at as well and they're figuring out where they can expand further as well in terms of portfolio. So interesting commentary coming from the management and that is why we're seeing Crompton Reeves Consumer Electricals today trading at the highest point uh, uh, since uh, March uh, 6th as well so keep an eye out on that one as well. All right, that's Crompton for you that's buzzing in today's trading session but definitely all eyes is going to be on that huge big uh, mission moon for uh, India's mission moon that is Chandrayaan 3 at 6.04 p.m. is when we are likely to see that soft landing takes place but uh, on back of that you have a lot of uh, space related stocks they are pretty much excited in trade today as you can see on your screen you have MTA Tech, Map My India, uh, Centrum, uh, I, I, it's not Centrum Capital, it is uh, Centrum Electronics uh, that is in focus so I'll get my uh, producer to change that for you. Uh, you also have Linde India that is soaring in uh, trade, you have Avantel also among the top gainers. Remember like I said that the Chandrayaan 3 is expected to make a soft landing today at 6.04 p.m. Uh, so uh, that's the reason why these can, uh, these counters have been buzzing in uh, trade over the last one week also. You have Linde India that has been soaring in trade, you have Avantel who is soaring in trade, you have, uh, you have Centum Electronics that has been buzzing in trade. So all of these uh, counters are buzzing. In fact, there are 13 companies that are supplying equipment ranging from electronic components to the metal gears that is used in the rockets communication and navigation and they those companies have added more than 2.5 billion dollars in market value this week alone so this is as per data that's coming from the agency so you can see definitely chandra and three is keeping these stocks also fucked up in trade 
Absolutely, but uh, like I was mentioning before, Cheryl, other than that, you know, we have to worry about those weather conditions, El Nino condition, if that worsens, what could be the impact of that? We are joined by Mr. G.P. Sharma now to talk more about that as well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sharma, for joining with us uh, this afternoon on ET Now. And, you know, what I want to see is in terms of, you know, if the El Nino conditions, do we expect that, that you know, all these conditions going to start intensifying further in the next year? What would be the impact on that in terms of that? El Nino is already, already, I will say, peaking, okay? Uh, it started uh, just about a couple of weeks back only, and then at the moment you can say El Nino is at uh, uh, its peak. Uh, neutral, hardly any, and uh, La Nina in any case, uh, not uh, at all discernible now. So, and it's showing its impact, okay? We have seen in the month of August, the rains have uh, been far and few. Okay, we've got Mr. Sharma on Apache line. Must note that today it is actually uh, raining in the city of Mumbai. We've actually seen rains over the last two, uh, two days, this after a dry spell for a while. So yes, maybe that's one of the reasons why we've lost that connection. But you had IMD official uh, say some comments uh, and we are getting this from a wire agency that's informist, uh, where they're saying that the rains were weak in August as El Nino had already set in. Also, uh, they are expecting the conditions to intensify till next year. Also, they've said that all India rains are 36 below normal so far in the month of August. I mean, last week you had source-based official, uh, source-based information from IMD, like IMD sources, also say that August rains are uh, seen much weaker than expected. So that's uh, the trend that has been taking place, and we are also witnessing that, isn't it? Okay, let's move on and keep it going with the stocks then. And Kunal, uh, SPI is the first stock that you've picked up for us on the technicals. Now, what do you think uh, in terms of the charts that are indicating for this PSU bank? Where do you see SPI now headed on? Uh, last six months, 10% return has remained in that range, you know. So now, uh, could we expect it to cross and move faster up in terms of the up move? Good afternoon. I think uh, exactly the kind of rally what we have seen in the PSU as a sector in the last uh, one to two months or so, uh, PSU banks have not been outperforming and specifically if I talk about SBI, that is where we have seen underperformance. But I think now uh, we are seeing a good base formation at the lower levels. Uh, the stock is on the verge of a breakout. Uh, the negatives in the stocks you can say are a, a story of a back. And I expect the stock to move higher towards the levels of at least first what I expect is 600 and second is what I expect is 615. So SBI could be a good pick from the current levels, but the risk to reward ratio is also very favorable. Moving on then, uh, Ankita, let's talk about Hindalco among the top gainers on the Nifty in today's trading session. What's actually um, uh, making the stock move? That's correct, Cheryl. Uh, um, Hindalco is up almost 2.8% uh, in trade today. Now, it is on the back of the fact that Hindalco Industries will be investing up to 2,000 crores to set up first of its kind uh, copper and e-waste recycling unit in India. Now, this move addresses the mounting challenges posted by e-waste, uh, recognized as the foremost waste stream on the global scale. And on the back of that, uh, Hindalco is seeing an uptick of 2.7% uh, in trade today. Okay, let's move on and talk about another banking name, uh, Kunal, that you've picked out, and that is Bandhan Bank. What is it uh, that now you're picking up in terms of charts for uh, Bandhan Bank? Uh, last six months, nothing exciting in terms of a move that has come in. Uh, at 238, would you still recommend a buy? Yes, uh, definitely I would recommend a buy uh, because if you look at the ch charts for Bandhan Bank, it has given a rounding bottom breakout on the technical chart perspective. Uh, 235 was a resistance for the stock. In today's trading session, we surpassed that. The first level what I see on the upside for the stock is 247 and the next target what I see is 253. So definitely Bandhan could be bought at the current levels as well. All right, moving on Ashesha, let's talk about Tata Motors and uh, why is this one in the spotlight today? Motors is in focus on the back of a note that has come in from JP Morgan where they are maintaining their buy stance on the stock with a target price of 635 or rather they are maintaining their neutral stance on the stock with a target price of 635. They say JLR outperforms its peers in the US and the China region but it continues to underperform its peers in the European region. As, as far as discounting trends are concerned, they say uh, discount rates in China have moved higher for all OEMs including JLR and discount uh, discounts on Land Rover has risen in the United States region as well. 
As far as the mix is concerned, it continues to remain healthy and Land Rover mix continues to sustain above that 80% mark. So positive commentary coming in. They are maintaining their neutral stance on the stock with a target price of 635. As far as inventory days are concerned, JP Morgan also says that China inventory days are broadly at normalized levels as compared to historic averages and uh, this, uh, this applies to both JLR as well as for other peers as well. So that's the note that has come in on Tata Motors because of which the stock is in focus today. Okay, let's keep an eye on that one. But Tamil Nadu newspaper, uh, Tamil Nadu uh, newsprint is also in focus. And uh, uh, when you look at it in terms of an up move, Kunal, uh, what a sharp up move in the last one month. 21, 27% uh, return approximately in the last one month. What is the upside now? One should actually keep an eye out on. This is just the uh, beginning of the rally. What we have seen, uh, paper stocks are likely to expect a price hike also in the uh, in the month of October. So I think that will be a positive trigger as well. And if I look at the long-term charts of TNPL, a very good bottom has been formed around 220 zone. And this is, you can say, among the entire paper stock, this has been the highest undervalued stock. So still a lot of upside is pending over here in this case. One should definitely even buy at the current levels. If you get any dips, then also it should be added. The first target, what I'm expecting over here, is stock is currently trading at 260. So the first target, what I'm expecting is 425 and second target is 500 so you can say almost this could be a doubler uh, from the current levels uh, with a horizon of three to six months Okay, surely keeping an eye out on those levels, 425 and then 500 is the target that uh, Kunal is keeping for uh, Tamil Nadu newspaper print. So keeping an eye out on that one. Let's move on and talk about Polymedi. Why is uh, Medicure, why is that stock in focus today? We have uh, Investec that has come out with a note on Polymedicure where they're actually maintaining, uh, their initiating coverage with a buy rating and a target price of 1,690 rupees per share. They believe the favorable macros are conducive for uh, the long-term growth of the company. New uh, therapies and US ramp up is something that will be driving the growth in terms of diversification for the company and the ongoing capex also that they have that is expected to double in terms of capacity strong execution is there uh, brand equity is also something that will work out well that is also quite strong and that could work out well for the company so they expect the sales and uh, to grow at a CAGR of 22% EBITDA to grow at a CAGR of 29% and PAT at a CAGR of 31% over the next three years that's from FI23 to FI26 and let's not forget the stock today is trading at a record high level. All right, that's Pauli Medicure hit a record high in today's trading session. From there on, it's given up some of those gains. But Kunal, let's talk about Bank of Maharashtra. And how is this one looking on the charts to you? Do you think that this will uh, be a standout ca uh, candidate when it comes to the PSU banking space, Bank of Maharashtra stock that one can bet on? Yes, I think definitely as we spoke about paper that uh, TNPL is one of the most undervalued stocks. Similarly, from the PSU bank space, I think uh, on the smaller front, uh, Maharashtra Bank is something which is extremely undervalued. On the technical charts, we have seen a fresh breakout from that resistance zone of 37-38 and we expect this momentum to continue on the higher end. So the first target what I see on uh, Bank of Maharashtra from the current levels will be 47. Uh, currently trading at 39.5 so you can say easily 20 percent upside and the next target is what i see is 51 on the upside so one can definitely initiate long positions even at the current level moving on then let's talk about hinduja global and that particular counter was in on track for its biggest intraday percentage gain since may 11th if you look at the stock price now it has given up some of those gains but just note the spike in that particular yeah. counter and that's because you had an announcement that came on the uh, on uh, the exchanges that the company said that their broadband unit uh, uh, one ott entertainment had launched an enterprise networking solutions brand so on back of that particular announcement saw the spike in hinduja global in today's trading session uh, as much as about three and a half percent making it the biggest uh, gain on an intraday basis since May 11th. Okay, surely keeping an eye out on that one. That's an interesting news piece there. But let's move on, talk about the stock number 11 for today and putting the spotlight on Suzlon. Not a one we uh, talk regularly about Kunal. But uh, are the charts interesting for Suzlon? Because in the last uh, six months, 160% return. Uh, what is the upside that you're expecting now? See, from the chart perspective, already the stock has hit a circuit level. Uh, on the weekly chart, it has given a fresh breakout. Uh, about its previous swing high. So I expect that at least the target on immediate basis to be somewhere around 23 and second target to be around 25. Since we have seen a sharp run up, uh, the stock on the higher side still have a potential of at least 10% from the current level. 
All right, moving on then. Uh, Ankita, let's talk about Brightcom. A lot of news flow surrounding this one today. Correct, Cheryl. Brightcom is in focus today and in fact, uh, it has hit the lower circuit. It's locked in the lower circuit, down 5%. Um, now, the news that's come in is that SEBI is uh, in an interim order, has restrained the company's top executive Suresh Kumar Reddy and Narayan Raju from holding any directorial positions until further notice. Now, Reddy is the promoter, come chairman and managing director of the company and Raju is the chief financial officer. Now, the market regulator has also uh, uh, restrained ACE investor Shankar Sharma on uh, from selling shares in the company. Now, in total, a total of 25 entities and individuals will be hit by the SEBI order. Now, the order pertains to an investigation that's related to uh, BGL's rising, uh, raising of money through preferential uh, issue of shares to entities that were directly or indirectly connected to it. Now, the money raised in the preferential issue was given as loans and advances uh, to its subsidiaries. Now, it was alleged uh, that the proper disclosures were not made in the annual report of the company in respect to the utilization of the proceeds of the preferential issue and on the back of that uh, the company stock is completely down and out uh, hammered out of shape and it's uh, locked in the lower circuit as of right now that's the news flow but we also have the clarification that's coming from uh, i mean Just more update about an hour or so uh, so go that brightcom they furthermore said in this uh, notice that i'm reading right now they informed the bsc and exchanges that uh, yes once they've received the notice they've actually set up a, dis uh, a dedicated internal team to thoroughly review the details of the implication and the company will be evaluating the uh, action and the course of action that they need to take to address this uh, situation in terms of uh, effectively and efficiently addressing the situation so they are looking at addressing it and uh, they are also in consultation with some of the legal experts to ensure all responses are uh, in the company and in the shareholders best interest now that's the update that brightcom, uh, brightcom has said as of now as well and furthermore to this news piece so let's keep an eye out on brightcom as of now yes it's locked in a uh, lower circuit but uh, Moving on to the next talk and that is Central Bank and uh, you know Kunal you've picked out a lot of banks is that something that you're really finding interesting and uh, what are the charts indicating for Central Bank similar to that of uh, uh, the other banks Bandhan Bank like you spoke about. Yeah, I think we spoke at the start of the show I think PSU is something what one should stick on to for the next three to six months uh, that is where the real momentum is we are seeing the small uh, PSU banks also picking up the trend uh, so I expect even Central Bank to go higher from the current levels and touch its uh, 52 week high which is placed around 40 currently the stock is trading at 35 uh, so PSU is the space where one should be that is where value is that is where momentum is and that is where we will expect this our performance to continue going forward as well. all right moving on let's talk about a stock that has uh, hit the bourses and ever since then has only been locked in the lower circuit of about five percent ashesha geo financial focus for the third consecutive day and yes as you mentioned it is uh, locked in lower circuit for the third consecutive day the stock is down 5% today down 15% in the last three trading sessions and uh, remember we are expecting an outflow of about 290 million US dollars on the nifty 50 index and an outflow of about 175 million US dollars which equals to 55 million shares on the sensex and that is because geo financial is seeing selling from passive index trackers so on account of this selling that has come in, the stock is locked in lower circuit for the third consecutive session. As far as the index treatment is concerned, the stock, remember, as I mentioned, is locked in lower circuit for two consecutive days. And hence, the index constitution committee has postponed the exclusion of this com uh, company. And it is it will now happen on the 29th of August. Geo Financial will continue to be a part of the MSCI and FTSE indices. And as a result of which, no inflows or outflows are expected as a result of this continuation in these two indices so on account of this news flow that has come in we are seeing buying on selling on the stock the stock is locked in lower circuit today okay let's keep an eye on that one but let's move on and uh, putting uh, the spotlight on x side and kunal what an up move the stock has already seen in the last uh, six months look at it from you know from those 170 levels to 269 currently still a further upside is what we should expect or can someone start booking out on some profits uh, from the kind of rally what we have gone, uh, the stock is generally a, a very slow mover but in the last uh, one to two months we have seen a sharp up move. So you can clearly see the momentum is coming back. Uh, those who are holding from the lower levels definitely one should book profits uh, at the current levels because if I look at the long term charts of X side over here, uh, the immediate resistance what I see on the upside is at 273-274 zone and this is where currently the stock is trading. So ideal opportunity to book some profit, if you get any dips, that should be utilized to buy the stock again. 
Okay, let's move on and uh, Sharan, like I promised and I said <laughs> that I would be taking SGS Enterprises, I did take that today and the stock actually intraday managed to see a very sharp jump up in the morning trade as well. It was up as much as 4% right up now when you look at it, yes, given up those morning gains but yes, what is the news flow? Yesterday we spoke about that bulk deal happening. The promoter entity sold actually 29.5% stake like we were talking about in the company at uh, and that's nearly a value of around 550 crores that was through the transactions that took place yesterday. Now the buyers, that's an interesting name that have come in. We have other Bella Sun Life Mutual Fund that is there, Quan Mutual Fund, Sundaram Mutual Fund, Morgan Stanley, uh, Society General, Alchemy Emerging Leaders. These all are other names that are coming in and many more names are there in this as well. So a lot of a slew of uh, funds that have actually invested in SGS Enterprises that was keeping the stock up as even uh, today, yesterday and today also we are seeing that up more still continuing for SGS Enterprises. All right, SJS uh, Enterprises, that is in focus. Uh, Vinny took my cue, that's great. But Kunal, <laughs> should people take your cue when it comes to IEX? Given the uh, fact that IEX has been a beaten down stock, then try to state a recovery, could not hold on to the recovery. And look what it's done in the last two, three months, it's just fallen off the cliff. I think definitely time for energy as a space to come back and IEX specifically it has been a massive underperformer uh, the valuations have gone above the roof now the valuations are at a comfortable level as well and we are seeing energy sector also coming back in focus uh, I think the support on the downside for the stock is at 120 we have seen multiple bounces from those levels so definitely you can see an interest is available at the lower levels uh, one can look for an immediate target on the upside of 132, 133 and once we sustain above that level, the next target that comes is 140. So IDX could definitely be taken as a long position. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And Kunal, keeping you to the, you know, you've picked up Phenolix cables also on the charts. Uh, what is it that now uh, you are understanding in terms of Phenolix cables? What is the target that one should keep an eye out on? If I look at the long term charts of uh, Phenolix cables, the breakout had just come about 990. And post that breakout, the stock is trading at 1080, 90 levels currently. Uh, the stock is forming a higher higher halo formation from the chart. We expect this momentum to continue towards the levels of 1200 on the higher end. So Phenolex cable still you can say from the current level has 7 to 8 percent upside here. Alright, that's the take coming in on Phenolex cables. But on that note, we'll slip into a break on this edition of Market for Tafford. When we come back, we'll continue taking all the stocks buzzing. Don't go anywhere.